you're a car company that's spent the last, I don't know, half century or more making beautiful four-door sedans and lovely two-door coupes, these are disappointing times because everyone wants something different. They want ride height, presence. They want an SUV. So Jaguar gave us their first SUV in 2016, the F-Pace, and the world was quite pleased about that. They followed up with the I-Pace, which is out later this year, and then they announced the E-Pace. And here it is. We're on the island of Corsica, uh, which is off the south of France in the Mediterranean. And that was a brave move from Jaguar because they've been at very great pains to tell us that this is a sporty car. So if you know anything about Corsica, <laughs> and the fact that there are no straight roads here, you'll understand why I think it's brave. The E-Pace has pitched into battle with cars like the Volkswagen Tiguan, the Audi Q5 and BMW X3, all of which are only slightly bigger. Like the F-Pace, it straddles two segments to maximise its chances with potential buyers, so some Audi Q2, BMW X1 and Mercedes GLA buyers have another car to choose from. At launch, Jaguar is offering two engines in various states of tune. In Australia, we'll start with all five versions paired with a 9-speed automatic and all-wheel drive. In Corsica, we drove the top-powered engines, the diesel D240 and the petrol P300, both in mid-level S-Spec with R-Dynamic, Active Driveline and Matrix LEDs. There are 36 separate trim levels before you even get going on options and option packs. That's a lot to take in. The cabin takes a lot from the F-Type Sports Coupe, including this grab handle and the gear shifter. You sit low and snug for an SUV in the E-Pace. The interior is roomy enough for four six-footers, but the rear passengers will be tight for knee room and foot room is a little bit narrow. Kids will be fine though, and there's lots of headroom even with the panoramic sunroof. The boot is a very decent 474 litres with the seats up. It really doesn't look like it could be that big. And with the seats down, that rises to over 1,100 litres. Like the cabin, the exterior takes a fair bit from the F-Type. The headlights are the most obvious, but as you work your way rearwards, you see the big muscles in the haunches and the now signature tail lights with the LED hook in them. So as I said at the start, throwing 1.8 tonnes of SUV down very, very tight roads was a pretty brave choice from Jaguar. That's really throwing down the gauntlet and daring us to say that it is or isn't sporty. This is a sporty SUV. No, it's not an SQ5 and it's not a, not a Macan, but it's a lot of fun and that's, I guess, that's what Jaguar was aiming for, just to let its drivers have a bit of fun. Around town, it's like any other really good SUV. I just stepped out of a CX-5 a week or so ago and it feels better than that. And that is, that, those are fighting words because that's a really good car. And, you know, against the Euro competition, it feels really good. I, I think this feels nicer than the bigger F-Pace as well. It's just got a nicer feel to it. There's, the steering's probably a little bit light for what I like, but again, that's a personal thing. You can't, you know, you can't throw a blanket over and say it's too light. Some people will like it. I don't, but that's okay. But having said that, it's very accurate. This active drive line, so we're in the, the high-powered diesel and the high-powered petrol. The active drive line is really good. It, it really gives you a lot to work with. I found the nine-speed transmission occasionally would diver, but you just did the shifting yourself. Uh, so if, if you're worried about getting the gears right, just spec a car with the gear shifters and that's in R dynamic or if you spec the separate steering wheel. There's not a lot to dislike about this car. In this S spec, I reckon this is probably the pick of the range with or without R dynamic. R dynamic is really almost all cosmetic. Uh, and so that's just a whatever floats your boat moment. But uh, yeah, I am impressed at how much fun this was to drive over those roads. I mean, those roads would be fun in anything, but it shouldn't have been so much fun in a car like this. This isn't the out and out sporty car. It hasn't got adaptive suspension. So you were f we were stuck with whatever Jaguar had decided and they made some good choices. Yeah, so if you're after a sporty SUV, it's a little bit different from the rest of the crowd. Yeah, this should be on the list. The two engines feel strong and not too strung out, particularly the 221 kilowatt petrol. 
In manual mode, the automatic shifts smoothly and quickly and will hold the gear until you tell it to change up. That's a little thing, but it tells you that Jaguar's engineers are hoons. In my book, that's a good thing. All the cars we drove had active driveline added, which is the same system as the completely nuts Ford Focus RS. It's worth having if you like driving, but if you're not planning on throwing your car down a fun road, save your money for gadgets. As I said at the start, Jaguar were very keen for us to see this as a sporty SUV. And I've got to say, I reckon they've hit it. Every road on Corsica is twisting, turning, twisting, turning, hairpins up, down, off camber. It was, it was so much fun. And that's what I think they were aiming for. This is a fun car to drive. Even though it's 1800 kilos, that's a lot of weight. It is really light on its feet. No, it's not going to stay with a Porsche Macan or an Audi SQ5, but it isn't that expensive either. So from a launch drive in a very challenging set of roads, that's a pretty good start.